The Dragon Gate perspective on sex and sexual activity as related to practice and Taoist cultivation. Um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so first up, um, if you're new to these practices, why does sex matter when it comes to meditation, right? So with, with the Taoist, um, for, for what we're doing here, Taoist alchemy, it's a specific kind of meditation that I teach. Um, and I've learned from my teacher, Wang Li Ping. And with this kind of meditation, we're using the body. The body is the foundation of the practice. So some kinds of meditation use, start with the mind. So like Buddhist shamatha practice, where we're just, we're working on stilling the mind. With this kind of meditation, we're focusing on the body, bringing our awareness into the body and working with the body. Um, and therefore, uh, sex is a big part of the body, right? We're, we're wired for procreation um, and sexual energy. The energy that goes along with um, sexual function impacts us and impacts the physical body. And so, and so it's, it's, it's good to chat about a bit. Uh, and a lot of people have questions about it because, you know, sex is sexy, right? So um, let's see. Uh, for the first thing is that for this talk, um, and, and what I'm going to do in this talk is really just give perspective from myself, what I've learned, um, in, and from my teacher, what he, how he approaches these questions when students ask him. Okay. Uh, now that being said, um, I'm, uh, I can only talk about the male experience. Unfortunately, sorry, girls, <laughs> I don't have the experience to talk about that. Um, and because I'm not the successor of this lineage, I don't, I'm not required to learn, um, the female sexual stuff. There is stuff there, um, within the lineage for sure. There, there is some very, um, powerful, uh, female practitioners within this lineage, um, living still to this day. There's one in particular I'm thinking of, uh, an old, um, Taoist nun on, on a mountain somewhere in China. Um, and, uh, so there, so Nu Dan Gong, uh, there's also, which is female alchemy is also a big part of this lineage, but I haven't learned it. Um, and generally for most practitioners, it's not really important. Um, the new Dan Gong is a very, um, it's geared for, um, monks, nuns who are leaving Chu Jia, they're leaving the family. Um, they're either being a hermit or joining a monastery. They're not going to have a family. They're not going to do that stuff. Then you go through that, uh, practice of new Dan Gong, the female alchemy, because female alchemy is very intense. It's not just sort of kind of nice kind of health, well-being type stuff. It's, you know, radically realign your pelvic bowl painfully, um, stop having periods, <laughs> your monthly uh, flow gets shut down, your hormonal system gets rewired. I mean, it's a pretty major undertaking. Um, and you, and, and you don't ne necessarily need it if you're living in the world. Okay. So anyways, that's, we'll just put that out there. Um, now for sexuality within this lineage and, and can you have sex and practice internal alchemy? Uh, yes, you can. So our lineage Master Wong approaches this question more naturally, I think, more easygoing than some lineages. Some lineages are very like, you cannot, you have to be celibate in order to do internal alchemy. Um, there are times when celibacy can help. And generally for us guys, uh, less is, is more. So, uh, sexual activity here means sex and it also means any kind of ejaculation, right? Other than maybe nocturnal emissions, that's kind of okay. Like you, you can't really do anything about it anyway. So don't, just don't worry about it. Um, but in general, less is more, but you don't, you don't need to be celibate. You don't need to be celibate to do this stuff. Um, and I know that from personal experience, there was a time when I was celibate for about nine months. Uh, and I was, that's when I had success with, um, one of the elixirs, uh, we were doing this intense firing process over that time, a lot of retreats, but it was very natural, you know, for, like it, like I just didn't think about sex. It was, I was practicing hours a day. I was just in that zone. It just, it just didn't cross my mind that it, it just, it would, I was just so focused on what I was doing and being in this kind of certain space, right? And it just happened very naturally. So I think it's important not to get too, um, attached to being celibate. Um, especially if you're in a relationship, 
um, I'm married, right? So, uh, you know, it, it's, and, and people who've asked Master Wong, do I need to be celibate? He usually gives them a question. And it's usually different to each person, but it's usually sort of like, um, no, just, just be natural, you know, do what you want. If you really, you know, you you love your partner and you have sex with a partner you really love, you're going to get so much chi anyways. I mean, they, the benefits of that sort of union are just so profound, sacred, and give you energy, right? Um, it's just sometimes for us guys, the jing energy is, um, if we have too much sexual activity, it can deplete the jing energy, uh, deplete the kidneys, We, can, you know, and whatnot. So there can be times where we want to... Um, um, do less, right? Okay, so that being said, are there any practices within the lineage that use sexual energy? And yes, there are. There are a number of practices within this lineage that harness sexual energy. Um, they're called, uh, the, the main one is called the copulation of the, the, the dragon and the tiger, or dragon tiger copulator, whatever, get it on, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's, it's working with yin and yang energy. It's a way of, it's it's a kind of yin and yang fusion that just supercharges it. Um, you don't need it though. You can do yin and yang fusion without uh, dragon tiger copulate. Um, you don't need it, right? And and most people don't use it. Um, um, so when, what other places can we use sexual energy in our practice? Well, sexual energy uh, is 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 um, it's good energy. It's it's powerful energy that if we can integrate into our physical system and our energetic system, it gives us vitality and health. And so one thing um, Master Wong recommends, and, and I've tried it, uh, and, and I can definitely say it's, it's great, is when, um, for men, if you wake up in the, in the middle of the night with an erection, uh, don't go back to sleep or, or whatever else, uh, cross your legs, go into a session, and draw that energy, right? So you inhale, draw the energy from, from your equipment um, back into the body, up through um, the, the Hui Yin area into the lower field. So the lower abdominal cavity is a sphere, and in the middle, in our lineage anyways, in the middle of that we have our lower field. So bring that energy back up into the lower field, and then breathe with it. So breathe in, lower field contract, Breathe out, lower field, expand. You could also do it with the whole cavity, lower abdominal cavity, right? Do reverse breathing. So you're br breathing in, lower abdominal, contract. Breathe out, lower abdomen or abdominal cavity, expands, releases, right? That's great. Um, you know, the erection will go away right away. And that, that energy, that sexual energy, it's quite hot. It'll get into the system and you'll, you'll feel feel good. You feel like you have a lot of vitality and, and whatnot. And you can also um, go into a full, you know, session, do other stuff with it. Um, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Um, what else is there? Uh, there are other ways we can use it within solo practice, using that energy, bringing it in. Um, now there is, and then the question is now, is there dual cultivation? Can you use sexual energy, cultivate it with a partner um, within this lineage? And again, yes, there are um, practices within this lineage for, lineage for dual cultivation. Um, now I should say that um, I think contempor in contemporary Taoist lineages, uh, dual cultivation is kind of looked down upon. It's, it's, I think society, I'm, I'm, I have more experience with China than I do here in the West. I know here in the West, it's definitely not. There's a lot of people interested in this kind of stuff, but in general, in China, um, it's fairly conservative. Uh, and so, um, it's, and, and there's a long history of discourse for hundreds of years within Taoist texts of whether it's appropriate to use a partner to sec to cultivate for cultivation right for sexual cultivation um and so for the men to use the woman as a cauldron as a ding and there's all these different um there's all these a lot of discourse a lot of discussion is it moral right and so i think from the perspective of our lineage um it is if the if they're two consenting adults right um and um but master wong has not taught these practices um, just because society is fairly, fairly conservative right now, at least in China. Um, and the thing he notes as well is that they're not central. 
to internal alchemy. They're not, you don't need them, right? And that they, in our lineage, they actually are, fall under what we call the, the bedchamber arts. There's a whole feng zhong shu, the whole arts of the, of the, of the chamber, uh, of the house. And these arts are, are, are actually just for regulating the household, right? So if it's, it's, if you're married uh, and you have a partner or however you conceive of marriage and whatnot, then balancing the qi between those two people is important for the whole household. Um, for the, you know, it's important for everyone else who lives there. Uh, and so uh, uh, there's various ways of, of balancing energy within a household, um, feng shui and, you know, all that kind of stuff, as well as one little chapter on, on uh, sexual congress, right? So to balance as a way of balancing the energy within the household, you can use, um, you can use sex. So that's how it kind of, that's how it fits into our, our um, overall picture of cultivation. It's not central. There is, you know, the, the copulation of dragon and tiger is just using sexual energy within ourselves, not with a partner. And that's a little more central, but even that you don't need to do yin yang fusion. Uh, you can do, you can do yin yang fusion without it. Okay. So, um, that's about all I have to say on, on the topic. Uh, I'm, um, thanks for listening and I'll, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.